Hello everyone, nice to have you back for another episode of our 107 channel. Today's topic, we change the three engine mounts and the shock absorbers. We change all three mounts, two at the front in the engine bay and one at the rear end of the gearbox. We remove all three of them and make a comparison of functioning of the old ones and the new mounts plus the shock absorbers. We compare the height of the new ones and the old and probably collapsed mounts. During the video you will agree that it really was necessary to have it all renewed, both shocks and mounts. When your car is shaking and vibrating like a washing machine in spin cycle, the cause is most probably worn out mounts amongst other things such as unbalanced wheels for example. We will show you how to do it yourself. The engine needs to be lifted some 10 to 15 centimeters or until the housing of the gearbox is touching the firewall in the engine bay. There was a video concerning the removal of the exhaust manifold. You might remember we had to lift the engine block in order to have access to the bolts. We will give you a drop down so you remember again how to remove the exhaust manifold so you stick to the order of the preparations to remove the manifolds. We will start right after introduction. Spark plug cables have been unplugged, coolant reservoir being removed, fan housing unbolted. We are now loosening the bolts of the front right hand side mounts. As you see a long prolongation is needed for the sockets. We start at the outer bolt, then there is another bolt at the inner side. Have just unbolted this mount here, we can now remove that guide sleeve shaped like a funnel. It is Allen bolt size 6 to be used. Work your way around it. It is some fiddling, but you'll, you'll make it. Around this massive bracket, bolt it to the block. It's just a little fiddling. This is what it looks like. Earlier on, we were sliding into the sleeve from below to unbolt the main bolt in the center of the rubber mount. Change of scenery. We are now at the rear end. The front has been slightly lifted with the lift underneath the oil pan. The cardan shaft as being bolted to the gearbox is being lifted as well but not high enough. So therefore I have to press the camshaft upwards as well. With this lift and this piece of timber I think it'll do. Otherwise I can't reach the rear rubber mounting with that mounting plate. Now you see that cast iron bracket on top of the rubber mounting. That thread that you see on top of that cast iron bracket, this adjustment bracket in front of the rubber mounting and this bottom plate underneath the rubber mounting. All these bits and pieces belong to the mounting assembly. Try to turn and twist the rubber in order to get all this out. Maybe you're lucky and you pull it out all together, including the bottom aluminium plate, so you gain some extra centimeters to move about with fiddling actually a job for a watchmaker or a patient man. I'm none of that. So the aluminium plate is removed, then try to grab the adjustment bracket. Now the rubber mounting has got some plate to be removed easily. Make sure that your rubber coupling, also called hardy disc, is not scratching at the underfloor. So don't touch the underfloor to prevent rust. Here we got the entire assembly of the rear engine mounting, the brand new one and the old one. The old one has collapsed, is wobbly, useless. This is what it looks like on a workbench. Bottom aluminium plate, rubber mounting on top. These two bolts are being bolted in from underneath. That heavy bowl shaped metal you might have noticed that keeps it all in place. In here goes the adjustment plate, on top of the rubber goes that washer with that nut. Once it is all bolted in place, the weight of the gearbox will compress the rubber in an extent to align that bushing with the vertical hole in the rubber to make it possible to slide this bolt through and secure it at the other end. Have a look. According to the manual, this is how it is supposed to be assembled. Let's go back underneath the car and have a look and give it a try. A very hard try. 
before I forget to mention it, in comparison from old to new, the old one collapsed and lost about a centimeter in height, wear and tear over time took its toll. You notice right away when you disassemble it. From experience, I suggest this order of assembly. Put the rubber mounting in here first, put it in place, slide the bolt in the rear bolt holder of the gearbox, right here. Do not put the nut on top, not yet. Second, now slide the adjustment bracket in place from the side of the rubber. Move a little back and forth until it is in the right position provided. As mentioned before, you cannot slide in that horizontal bolt until the weight of the gearbox is compressing the rubber downwards to make the alignment for slotting in that very bolt. Take the bottom plate with the thinner part facing upwards, slide it in place once the bottom plate is in place. Make sure you bolt these two bolts through the plate into the rubber mount to hold the rubber mount in place from underneath. From top the mount is being held by this washer and that nut. Double check everything, take your time. Now the two bolts from the bottom are in place. Everything is in the same position like before dismantlement. Tighten the nut on top which is having size 19. Next. I now lower the lift some centimeters. There you see for yourself the weight of the gearbox is compressing the rubber. I now got the perfect alignment to plot in that bolt which is being held with a thread at the front end facing the engine bay. A thrust, a turn, a twist and it fits. Here you see everything is in place. Now lower the lift completely until the drive shaft is moving freely. Remove the lift, fire up the engine for a minute, kill the engine and everything falls in place. Then go back underneath and tighten all the bolts and nuts. Now let us deal with the front end. For example, this shock here, I can push in and pull out that rod with my bare hand. This shock is not functioning anymore, completely without any dampening properties for sure. Let me take the new one in comparison. It takes some force to pull the rod out, just 2 or 3 millimeters. Same thing with the rubber mounts. The engine block is sitting on this for 35 years or more. No surprise at all, they had to be changed. Talking about shock absorbers, there is a repair kit available. Please see the drop down at the top on the right hand side. This kit consists of these two upper rubber dampeners, this assortment of washers, they are being drop forged to hold and fit snugly, plus these self securing nuts. As mentioned before, this kit does not include the shocks, have to buy them separately. Available from different suppliers with a range of prices. Reuse the old brackets, they are good enough. Please bear in mind that the biggest washer has to go on top to embrace the big rubber dampeners. The smaller ones go to the bottom of this assembly. The bracket is then bolted to the rubber mount. Off we go, we start. The pin of the shock, which is not retractable, always points to the top. Next step, take a big rubber dampener facing the part number downwards. Next step. The heat protection plate facing towards the exhaust manifold. Next, another big dampener, part number also facing downwards. Next, the washer embracing the dampener. Next, small washer and the self-securing nut. Torque for these nuts are between 8 and 12 Newton. The top of the assembly is done. Next step from the bottom. This is the retractable rod of the shock. Another washer, the smaller one in comparison with the washer that goes on top. Right here is the insertion to put a spanner size 7 later on, so you tighten it all up. Next, smaller dampener, part number facing downwards. Next, this bracket goes here, from below, next dampener, then the drop forged washer to embrace the rubber. Next, the nut to tighten this, so this is it. This is what it looks like. Then it will be bolted in place. Have a look. The lower part is being bolted to the engine mount, the upper part to a mounting at the frame. 
The rubber of the engine mount does not have a thread to hold the bolt in place, neither does the protective plate. Only the bracket can be used to hold the bolt. The bolt which will be bolted in from below needs to get into that nut which is being welded on top of the bracket. Back at the engine bay. Stick to the order please. First, put back that sleeve. Next, put the rubber mount on top of it. Later on, when we lower the engine in place, it will fit snugly into that recess in that metal bracket which is worked into the rubber. Next, the two Allen bolts size 6 go back in place. Now tighten them up. Start with the bolt which is facing the engine. Use some 70 newtons. Next, socket size 10 and the spanner size 7 to counter. Use some 7 to 12 newtons to tighten the lower part of the assembly. This protective plate sits on the bracket which is bolted onto the engine. It is kind of intuitive. The oval hole shows towards the engine. The assembly with the shock absorber is next in order to be put in place. Now take that heat protection plate, try to compress the shock every millimeter you can, every millimeter will help. Now take the heat protection plate, slide it in from above, place it over the rod of the shock. Next, take the rubber dampener, press it in the drop forged washer, part number facing downwards, slide it over the rod small washer and a soft securing nut on top. Tighten the top nut with some 7 to 12 newtons. Nota bene, use your left hand to hold the shock tightly and prevent it from turning around. Off you go, there you go. This much to cover that topic. Three engine mounts and two shocks. How to disassemble, replace and put it back together. Last thing to do, Go underneath and use these two long balls to secure the engine from below. Slide these balls into that sleeve and give it some 70 to 75 newtons. This should do the job. You're ready. Everything is done. Would be pleased to get some appreciation. Please subscribe and give me a thumb up. Hope to see you next time. Bye bye everyone.